How's it going everyone? This is Medcat here, and today we're going to talk about index of refraction and later on Fermat's principle. But first let's break into index of refraction. First and foremost, for many things in the MCAT, we want to memorize the equation. So first things first, index of refraction is going to be equal to the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the speed of light as it passes through a particular medium. Specifically, the medium whose index of refraction we're calculating. So n of course is our index of refraction. This is unitless because the units actually will cancel out as we'll see. C is going to be the speed of light in a vacuum, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. This is also a value we do need to have memorized for the MCAT. And then third, V, velocity of our light in the medium, also measured in meters per second but is going to always be less than our speed of light in a vacuum. Okay? We can't go faster than the speed of light, but we definitely can slow down from that speed of light in a vacuum. Okay. Rearranging our equation, we can solve actually for v and kind of see the relationship that n has on the speed of light. And because n is in the denominator, the greater this index of refraction, the more the medium will slow down that light actually. So the higher the index of refraction, the slower light goes. One way you can think of this is the quote unquote thicker the medium is, the higher index of refraction it will have. For example, n equals one, or an index of refraction of one, is the index of refraction of a vacuum. Light travels very quickly through this at three times 10 to the eighth meters per second because there are no particles in its way. Whereas something like water, for example, is about 1.33, its index of refraction. Okay. So there are going to be some more particles that will interact with the photons, slowing that light down just a little bit. Okay. That being said, let's break into a double AMC derived practice problem. So I've taken this from a practice problem and rearranged it a little bit to help us practice a bit more. So let's read it. If light is traveling at 1.7 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, what is the index of refraction of the medium through which it is passing? So feel free to pause the video and try the problem yourself. Assuming you've done that, let's solve this problem now. First things first, we need to remember our formula. So this might be helpful to write out on test day. Next, we know we're solving for n, so we should use c, which we should have memorized, as 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Then we're going to divide this by 1.7 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Now how we should do a lot of math on the MCAT is break things down into three parts. Things that aren't powers of 10, powers of 10, and the units. So our first part that we can break down is 3 divided by 1.7. Next we can do 10 to the 8th divided by 10 to the 8th, and we can pretty clearly see that's going to just be 1. And then we also have meters over second divided by meters over second which will cancel out as well. So what we're left with at the end of the day is three divided by 1.7. Now for the MCAT, we're not gonna to need to know the exact value of this, but we are going to need to be able to approximate things. So if we take a look at perhaps something similar, like n equals three divided by 1.5, we know that's gonna be two. But because this denominator is a little bit greater, we actually know that it's going to be a little bit less than 2, because if we divide by something that's a little greater, it's going to be a little less than 2. So we could guess that it will be about 1.7, which is actually pretty close to its true value, which is about 1.765. So that's how you go about that type of math on the MCAT. Next, let's break into Fermat's principle of least time and how it kind of ties in with index of refraction. What I've drawn here to the left is light passing in this yellow arrow from an index of refraction of one, this would be pertaining to a vacuum, to a second index of refraction, which is 1.33, which would be about that of water or ice. Okay. When light is going through a medium that is lower, it can afford to take a path that is a little more, I guess you could say, circuitous and not as the crow flies from point A to point B. If we were thinking about light traveling kind of on a road trip from point A to point B. 
Whereas when it gets to something that's a little higher index of refraction, where it travels a bit more slowly, it has to take a little bit more of a direct path, at least with respect to this vertical normal line that we call. Okay. So this is a normal line, something I probably should have mentioned, but you should see this um, in Snell's law again, which we'll cover a little bit later. Okay. Same thing we can see actually with a lifeguard. So the analogy here is if we have a lifeguard and we have a person, and this is something you actually may have seen in calculus, so sorry to give you any fl uh, calculus flashbacks, but it's a good example of what we're looking at here. If the lifeguard can run six meters per second, but can only swim two meters per second, it's actually not fastest to completely go as the crow flies because they can cover more ground on the beach, but it's also not completely fast, uh, faster to uh, travel directly to where the vertical line passes on the person who's in distress right here and then go completely vertically down. It's actually ideal to do a hybrid of both. Okay, and we would calculate this with a calculus equation here. But this is six meters per second and we're going to split this down the middle here. So we're not gonna choose either extreme and we're not gonna choose either extreme here. This is exactly what's happening here with Fermat's principle of least time. And this is kind of a confusing concept and one that's not super likely to be tested on the MCAT, but I do think it can help elucidate some of the issues that will come along later when trying to think intuitively about Snell's law. So I've included a link in the description that I read a little bit that I thought was a really good, more in-depth explanation of Fermat's principle of least time, if you're interested. That's it for today's MedCat video. Feel free to hit the like button, subscribe, and check out my comprehensive amino acid playlist, which can be found in the link in the description below.